pleomyomas. These are benign tumors that are arising from the myometrium, and they are localized proliferations of the smooth muscle cells and surrounded by a pseudo capsule of the compressed muscle fibers. The tumors are discrete spherical and irregular. The cause of these tumors is not exactly known and they are originating from the myometrium and their estrogen dependent tumors. They contain a large number of estrogen and progesterone receptors. They enlarge in pregnancy because there will be an increased secretion of estrogen and shrink during menopause when there is low production of estrogen hormone. The risk factors for development of these leiomyomas is nulliparity, family history, obesity, and being an Afro-Caribbean race. There is a reduced risk in smoking and long-term hormone contraceptive use. These tumors will vary in size from either microscopic to very large multinodular tumors. And they are spindle-shaped with a big nucleus, clearly differentiated from the normal uterine tissue. Young myomas are highly vascularized with the older ones on the blood supply is reduced and they undergo degenerative changes. There are subgroups of these uterine fibroids based on their anatomic relationship to the layers of the uterus. We have intramural or interstitial, which are centered in the muscular wall of the uterus. We have subserosal fibroids just beneath the uterine serosa. Pedunculated leomyomas is a subserosal subgroup. And they can be parasitic myomas or intraligamentum. And some mucosal myomas are just beneath the endometrium. Polyploids are subclass of some mucous myomas. Cervical fibroids are the rarely occurring group of these leiomyomas, and they are located on the cervix. We have degenerative changes that these fibroids undergo atrophic change. We have hyaline change where the mucopolysaccharides deposit around the muscle fibers. Cystic changes whereby liquefaction occurs. Calcific changes or calcareous change which is mainly postmenopausal. Septic changes occur in case of infection. Red degenerative changes, those are kinase change or coagulative necrosis which occurs on these fibroids. Mixomatous changes, those fat degeneration and malignant changes to lead to development of a leiomyosarcoma which is a malignant tumor. Leiomyomas are asymptomatic at first, menorrhagia, dysmenorrhea, abdominal swelling, pressure, symptoms, dyspareuria, miscarriage, edema of the lower limbs, intrauterine fetal death and intrauterine fetal growth restriction can occur during pregnancy. There will be premature labor, abortion, and on examination, you realize there's a palpable pelvic mass that's rubbery on perfection. And vaginal examination will show a bulk uterine enlargement that is continuous with the uterus. And this one is responsible for differentiating between cysts and these fibroids. The investigations you conduct will include endometrial biopsy, full blood count, and will show anemia, laparoscopy, ultrasound, also transvaginal scanning. Hysterosalpingography, pregnancy test, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and urine analysis. IVP can also be done in these patients. The management is mainly conservative and surgical. In conservative management, you use analgesics, salicylic acid, mephenamic acid, you use combined oral contraceptive pills, gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs, and hematinics in case of low blood hemoglobin or transfusion together with rehydration of these patients. Surgical management will include endometrial ablation, transcervical resection of the fibroids, uterine artery embolization and myomectomy, also hysterectomy whereby you remove the hole of the uterus. The complications arising from these fibroids are anemia, miscarriage, infertility and leiomyosarcoma. In pregnancy, there can occur red cell degeneration, miscarriage, and postpartum hemorrhage. 